Bolivar is a walking conundrum because he he's the Lich King, which controls a lot of the dead in the Scourge, and he was transformed by Alstraza, the Dragon of Life. Mm -hmm. He's like a walking conundrum, so is he going to be like the person who leads us into this battle? He actually, he is going to be a character that's really ingrained in the story. It's a good, a good eye on that. <laughs> so because he has, like, yeah, he, he does straddle this line between life and death himself. And so as you saw, you know, he might have, he lost that fateful encounter of Sylvanas, but he's still around and he's going to serve with all this knowledge he has of death and of the Shadowlands. He's going to be a guide of sorts for us as we delve into, you know, the, these great mysteries that are plaguing the Shadowlands and, and trying to help us fix things. So, you know, obviously what's going to happen to the Scourge because the Lich King controlled them and Bolivar had to be a Lich King because otherwise they'd just wreak havoc everywhere. What's going to happen to they're those to those? They're going to start wreaking havoc everywhere. <laughs> uh, in, in the events leading up to the release of Shadowlands, we're actually going to have some, some pre-patch events that will be the Scourge. Now that they're not being controlled by the Helm of Domination, they're going to be loose on Azeroth and you're going to have to help. Is, do you have anything special for the players who specifically play Undead on the Horde side? Will they feel the effects of you know what's happening around them because they're tied really closely, similar to Death Knights, to the Shadowland? I mean, that's something like it's something we're really happy to explore with artifacts. For example, uh, we always want to look at you know with any piece of content and say Death Knights and Maldraxxus. Maldraxxus is a zone that is kind of this ultimate expression of the Scourge. It's what the Scourge <laughs> wished the Scourge could be, and so. You know, you would probably expect some, some nods to some of the Death Knight uh, stuff that's going on, or Bolvar surely would recognize one of his unholy knights, you know, standing before him. And so, with all those sorts of things, it's going to be based on the context of the situation. What can we do to help reinforce and, and you know, make nods to who you are as the character and your place in the story? And uh, we'll always be looking for the right opportunities to help reinforce that. The really cool thing about Shadowlands is we're going into the realm of death where we'll see people that have died in past experiences. Will we see Tyrion or Uther, perhaps, in this expansion? You, you, you will probably see Uther uh, <laughs> uh, safely tucked away in Bastion. Bastion <laughs> is, is where the Kyrian are, and they're very righteous. Uh, they kind of uphold the standards of the afterlife. Uh, but each one of these covenants has a leader, uh, and they also have, you'll, you'll encounter some of our, our old favorites, you know, those that have passed on in each one of the covenant areas. I just feel like it brings, it just, brings a tear to my eye to see all these characters because 25 years of Warcraft, 15 years of World of Warcraft to see these characters like actually in the World of Warcraft because a lot of them we, we didn't see. You know, we saw statues or we've heard stories or we saw them in Warcraft 3 but never in World of Warcraft. What's it like to bring these characters to life for the first time in this MMO? MMO? I mean, it's an honor, right? Like, I mean, I played Warcraft as a kid. I grew up you know, waiting for, I heard rumors of the MMORPG coming out and it obviously changed my life forever and so the opportunity to have characters like Uther, or these long lost heroes and villains that really defines the early days of Warcraft. It is nothing short of an honor to be able to try to, you know, drive their story further forward and, and really try to see, you know, what have they been up to I and mean, how are they going to help us. I find it brilliant that Sylvanas is behind this driving force, doing something very, you know, manipulative and evil, essentially. But she's come full circle of what Arthas made, what created her to do. You know, Arthas transformed her to be the bringer of death, to bring death to all. That was what his goal was. And it's very ironic to see her come full circle and become what she never wanted to be and fulfilling that destiny in a sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think, I mean, hopefully, obviously, we, we've had some some turns and plot twists <laughs> when it comes to Solanus. I mean, we'd hope that everyone was ready for her to don the you know, Helm of Domination and become the Lich Queen, and in that mm -hmm. final moment, boom, you know, she breaks open you know, the pathway uh, between Icecrown Citadel and the Maw, which was the thinnest line between us and the Shadowlands. Um, but don't make the assumption that you know exactly where she's going with everything. I mean, clearly, yes, right now she wants to bring death onto Azeroth, but there's something deep behind that as well. Yeah, because uh, like Bolivar, Bolivar sat on that throne at level 80, Sylvanas comes in at 120, that's why it was so easy, right? <laughs> Unless Sylvanas has some, you know, she's made some alliances, she has uh, access to certain powers that, you know, maybe we've only seen glimpses of, and so that's, you know, what's going to be really interesting in uncovering her story and, and what she's up to in the Shadowlands is going to be seen, you know. Yeah, Sylvanas blocked Sarfang, the, the guy that can cleave you know, hundreds of foes with a single axe swipe. Uh, how does she block that with the dagger? Like, what forces is she wielding? And those forces are rooted in the Shadowlands. They're rooted in death. 
the last question is, what is Sylvanas' arc to you guys? Is it an arc of redemption, an arc of revenge, an arc of, or just an arc of discovering who you all, who you truly are on the inside? Without giving anything out, I know it's a yeah, tough yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a loaded question. There's a, there's, there's a lot <coughs> to go for Sylvanas. I mean, she's an extremely important character. She's a deep and complex character. Uh, I think we want to treat her with, with a lot of respect. But we do understand that she has a very heavy evil aspect, and so she's got to be true to her form at the end of the day. But uh, there's a lot yet to be told about her, and um, I, don't, I don't I don't want to give too many spoilers away. Just you know, rest assured that we have a really strong arc plan for her. Awesome. And when can we get our hands on Shadowlands and World of Warcraft? Uh, well, the official story is you'll have it by December 31st of 2020. Um, and that's where I, our way of saying it'll be out next year. Yeah, um, sometime so, next year. And we certainly hope to get it to you before then, but it will be out next year. Awesome. Yeah, if you have if you have an opportunity, which I, hopefully you do, uh, we have part of the the first zone you'll level in, Bastion, is playable here, and so that's a glimpse into you know something you might not expect Land of Death to be. It's this it's a land of golden fields and glimmering spires and, and uh, where the spirit healers of the Valkyr ultimately have their roots. Yeah. So that's a really cool opportunity to see a lot of what you might not expect the Shadowlands to be.